Welcome to PADT, Phoenix Analysis and Design Technologies, where we make innovation work through simulation, product development, and rapid prototyping. As an ANSYS certified channel partner, we sell and support the full suite of ANSYS tools in the Southwest United States across six states. Our headquarters is in Tempe, Arizona, and we have offices near Salt Lake City, Utah, Los Angeles, California, Denver, Colorado, and Albuquerque, New Mexico. In addition, we provide training, mentoring, and simulation consulting with these ANSYS tools worldwide. In this video, I'm going to show you the robust meshing capabilities that ANSYS meshing provides for mechanical applications. So here we are in ANSYS Mechanical, and you can see that I've brought in a model uh, of an assembly of a tractor axle. Uh, it's actually quite complicated. We have about 55 bodies or so, and we have several bodies that have a lot of curvature, a lot of facets, and different size surfaces to them. A lot of cutouts for different things, and if we hide the main bodies, we'll see that there's actually several bolts in the model as well. And one of the things that you'll notice about the bolts, if we zoom in, is that they're not just simple shanks. They actually have a little indentation to them as well. So a relatively complex part. And we're just going to go ahead and create a default mesh and see what ANSYS spits out. ANSYS will always try to create a default mesh um, depending on the complexity of the part. And it will try to get a decent sized mesh out front without the user having to add anything into the model. Now one thing you might notice is that ANSYS actually solves uh, the meshing process on multiple cores. It will send different parts to different cores and mesh them simultaneously and then afterwards it will kind of use the end of the process to package the entire mesh together. Which is really nice. It adds a lot of time savings without having to mesh all the parts sequentially. So we can see that that's done. It's created about 415,000 elements in the model, and it looks pretty good. I mean, it's a good default mesh. We haven't done any settings to it. We haven't added anything ourselves. And it's tried to create uh, localized areas of high refinement around the cutouts, around the curved surfaces, etc. However, there are issues. If you look at the bolts, for example, they're pretty coarse. This would probably cause a lot of issues when we apply a bolt pretension to this model. So we're going to go ahead and create a few mesh controls that I'm going to show you live. The first is I'm going to create a multi-zone method for the bolts. Now I already have a name selection for the bolts, so I don't have to select them one by one, which is really nice. And I'm going to go ahead and set up some settings for the multi-zone criteria to make a nice clean hex mesh for those all those bolt bodies that I have in the model. We're going to go ahead and switch this to tetrahedrons and then change the surface mesh method. We're going to go ahead and change that to a uniform as well. So from here, we're going to add a few different body sizing controls to different parts. Uh, it's the easiest way to refine the mesh. So I'm going to go ahead and add a sizing. Uh, first one will be the bolts again. And we're going to do 2.5 e to the minus 3 uh, meters. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the gaskets. We're going to go ahead and select the name selection for which we have gaskets for, and then we're going to go ahead and change the element size to 3 to the minus 3. Now we're going to add some ones that we don't have name selections for, specifically, for example, the axle bodies. And we're going to give that 7e e to the minus 3 meters. And then we're also going to do the same thing to the cover and the casing. Now technically, since I'm doing the same size, I could have just selected all of them at once, but just to break it down, I split them up into different body sizing controls as well. So here's the cover doing next. And again, 70 to the minus 3. The last thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a patch conforming method um, to the cover. Um, it is a quite complex uh, piece of part. Uh, you have a lot of curved surfaces, so we want to do a patch conforming just to take care of, it, care, take care of that. So we're going to go ahead and change that to tetrahedron, and that's it. So now we're done. We've assigned all of our mesh controls. That took, you know, about a minute or so to do. And we're going to go ahead and regenerate. Now, again, this is going to take longer uh, because we've added refined controls to the mesh. But the idea of this is to show you how easy it was to create not only a default mesh, 
but be able to add some few sizing controls that hopefully will yield a strong enough mesh for particular analysis. And again, it's going to distribute the parts to different cores and mesh them simultaneously, and then finally package them all together at the end of it. And you'll actually see it highlight the areas of the model that it's actually working on at the moment in green, uh, if you can see that in the video. So the meshing is done. Uh, it, now you can see it gave us about 930,000 elements in the model. Uh, and even just from the graphics, you can see it's definitely more refined. But more than that, it's very uniform. It's clean. You know, we, we're not getting any weird faceting occurring in the bolts. All of it's really good. And this is the power of ANSYS meshing, is the ability to, one, bring in a really complicated model with several parts and not have to do a lot of user intervention to create a default mesh, but also provide an easy way to add in mesh controls that will yield a strong mesh suitable for a structural or thermal analysis. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, you can jump on our website at padtinc.com or give us a call at 1-800-293-PADT or send us an email at support at padtinc.com.